بیٹھے کیا کہتے ہیں تلاوت کرنی ہے عظیم چیما صاحب نے السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان فی خلق السماوات والارض والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم على جنوبهم ويتفكرون كرون في خلق السماوات والارض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحان كفقنا عذاب النار ربنا انك من تدخل فقد أخزيته وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا سمعنا منادي ينادي للإيمان للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك وعلى رسلك 
على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد جزاكم الله جزاك الله يعني إنشان طاهر مظهر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بلابر هزور وعليكم السلام I will now present the English translation of the verses just recited, taken from Surah Ali Imran, Chapter 3 of the Holy Quran, verses 191 to 195. I seek refuge with Allah from Satan, the rejected. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. In the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the alternation of the night and the day, there are indeed signs for men of understanding. Those who remember Allah, standing, sitting, and lying on their sides, and ponder over the creation of the heavens and the earth. Our Lord, Thou hast not created this in vain. Nay, holy art Thou, Save us then from the punishment of the fire. Our Lord, whomsoever thou causest to enter the fire, him thou hast surely disgraced, and the wrongdoers shall have no helpers. Our Lord, we have heard a crier calling unto faith. Believe ye in your Lord, and we have believed. Our Lord, forgive us therefore our errors and remove of us our evils and in death number us with the righteous. Our Lord, give us what thou hast promised to us through thy messengers and disgrace us not on the day of resurrection. Surely thou breakest not thy promise. Jazakumullah. Jazakumullah. अच्छा अकील बट साहब क्या पढ़ना है आपने अस्सलाम वालेकुम रहमतुल्लाहि व बरकातहू प्यारे हजूर अस्सलाम पाकिजा मंजूम कलाम हजरत मसीह मौद अलैहि सलातु वसलाम वो पेशवा हमारा जिससे है नूर सारा नाम उसका है मुहम्मद दिल बर मेरा यही है सब पाक हैं पयंबर एक दूसरे से बेहतर लेकर खुदा बर से खूब तर है खूबी में एक कमर है 
उस पर हर एक नजर है बदरो दुजा यही है पहले तो रहा में हारे पारुस ने है उतारे मैं जाऊं उस के वारे बस ना खुदा यही है हाँ जी बुरहान ने बुराया ट्रांसलेशन अस्सलाम वालेकुम प्यारे हजूर वालेकुम The following is the translation of couplets taken from Duri Samin written by the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam and composed in the love of his master the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that guide of ours with whom everything is illuminated his name is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he is my beloved all prophets are pure one better than the other but from god almighty he is the best of creation he is better than those before like a moon in his traits all eyes are upon him he is the moon of dark nights the earlier ones gave up on the way he took us across i dote upon him he is the one who is the guide jazakallah jazakallah acha so there's a ye assalam alaikum pyare hazur kya kehte hain ab aap kitne log baithe hain yahan is waqt ye pyare hazur we have uh, 168 uh, students and a uh, few nice some assembly members you national army members they are also students is uh, there a student of acha uh, acha kya to kya kehte hain students uh ji pyare hazur they have uh, questions and uh, um those who are asking questions they know and they are ready whenever hazur permits acha theek hai fir shuru karo السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ پیارے حضور وعلیکم السلام ڈیئر بلوڈ حضور ڈیو ٹو کووڈ 19 देयर हैज बीन एन इंक्रीज इन वेरियस मेंटल हेल्थ इश्यूज स्पेशली इन स्टूडेंट्स व्हाई एडवाइस वुड यू गिव टू एम द यूथ टू हेल्प देम कोप विद सच इश्यूज अच्छा हैव यू एनी स्टैटिस्टिक्स हैव यू कलेक्टेड एनी डेटा देयर आर हाउ मेनी स्टूडेंट्स एंड हाउ मेनी ऑफ देम हैव सफर्ड mental health issue because of uh, covid uh no hazir man the and what is what is the basis of your question uh, although although, although 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 what is the basis of it it is generally said that cause of the mental health issues among the students one of the causes is covid because uh, they are uh, they not going outside they are not allowed to um, involve in their activities in studies and other extracurricular activities sports and this and that but for an amadi student you must remember as allah taala says i have been answering this question on so many occasions allah taala says allah bi zikrillah tatmainul qulub right that it is allah's the remembrance of allah if you remember allah then it will give you comfort to your heart it will give comfort to your heart so an ahmadi student 
during these days should bow before Allah. He should pray his five daily prayers more fervently, fervently than before. He should try to do the Talawat of the Holy Quran and seek guidance from the Holy Quran, find out the things, the commandments of Allah Ta'ala, where Allah Ta'ala has given us how to give comfort to your heart. What are your, the purpose of your life? So if you know the purpose of your life, these things will not affect you, although it is a natural result of it that some people will suffer, but not majority. So this is how we have to find out the ways, how can we cope with this situation. So the, the, the best way is the remembrance of Allah. Have you listened to my address to Lajna and Maila? Right? I also mentioned there that how can you give comfort to your heart and then avoid such, uh, such things. So those, are, those who are involved in worldly things, naturally and obviously they will suffer from the health issues, mental health issues because they have frustrations. Their, their priorities are different. So this is why they suffer. If your priority is to seek nearness of Allah Ta'ala, to get closer to Allah Ta'ala, then at least I can say 95% of your the frustration will be removed. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. I love this. Assalamu alaikum, beloved Azur. Wa alaikum salam. My question is, Hazrat Masih Maud salam mentions that followers in his community will excel in knowledge and will confound all others with the light of their truth, reasoning, and signs. Beloved Azur, how can we become a part of these blessed members? You see, for to achieve anything, you have to work hard. If a student is hardworking, who believes in Allah Ta'ala, and a student who is also hardworking, who does not believe in Allah Ta'ala, so, and both, you know, are trying to achieve and excel in their knowledge and wisdom. So, Allah Ta'ala will give reward to both of them, since both of them are working hard to achieve their goal and objective, right? But for a person who is a religious person, who believes in Allah Ta'ala and who thinks that I am from the community of Prophet Muhammad Islam, whom Allah Ta'ala has promised that he will excel his followers in wisdom and knowledge, then we have to pray to Allah Ta'ala that both of us are working hard to achieve this goal. But I believe in you. So I pray to you that you give me more wisdom and give better results of my effort. So in this way, you can have better result. Otherwise, if you are not praying to Allah Ta'ala, you are not discharging your duties you owe to Allah Ta'ala, you are not following the commandments of Allah Ta'ala, then you will not achieve these things. So, don't think it is a negative point. It is a plus point because you are not only achieving all these goals here in this world, but it will also help you in the hereafter. Right? So, keeping in view all these things, if you work hard and whichever field you have chosen for yourself and try to excel in it, inshallah you will succeed and excel. 
but if you half-heartedly do discharge the duties you owe to Allah Ta'ala, then result will not be as uh, favorable, as uh, positive as you think it should have been. Right? So for a, yes, for a true for a believer, you have to keep in mind that you have to discharge your duties alongside your, uh, you owe to Allah Ta'ala alongside your uh, working hard in your field of study. Right? Okay. Right. Assalamu alaikum, beloved Hazur. I'm a post-grad student. I wanted to know what is the best way for a student to manage his obligations towards Khilafat, his family, his studies, and his physical and mental health. So, you know, what are your obligations towards Khilafat? You know or not? Yes. What are they? To listen to the Khalifa of the time, to pray five times first, a day. First thing is that you should, your, your question should be that how can how best we can discharge the duties we owe to Allah Ta'ala? Huh? So, if you discharge your duty towards Allah Ta'ala, the ultimate result of that will be that you will be discharging your duties for Khilafat as well. Right? That Whatever Khalifa says, what does Khalifa say? That you bring change in your life, you try to be closer to Allah Ta'ala, you f offer your five daily prayers, you do Tilawat of the Holy Quran daily, you find out the commandments given in the Holy Quran and try to practice those things, find out what are the do's and don'ts in the Holy Quran and what you have to do and what, what are the things which we, you should not do. You'll have to refrain yourself from those, right? These are your obligations, right? Secondly, so your studies. Study, as long as you are a student, you have to work hard. Your goal and objective should be to excel in your studies, as I have already said. For that, you will have to work hard. If, you see, a common, a, a good Russian student studies almost 12 to 13 hours a day. Do you spend that much time in your studies? If not... Not that much. I try, not, but not that so, much. If not, then it means there's still a gap and you have to fill that gap. You have to work hard. An American student, the, the student who excels in his studies, he studies for 12 to 14 hours. You will have to see to it. Are you studying that much? If not, it means you are not doing justice. So, for offering your prayer, five daily prayers, you spend only two hours. If you offer Nawafil, another extra one hour or 45 minutes. So, three hours, right? And your body also has the right on you. And that is, you must have some sleep. And that should be up to six hours, right? So, six plus three for prayers, nine hours. And if you work hard, if you are praying, permanently for three hours, you're trying to, uh, you know, pray as uh, has been uh, uh, commanded to us by Allah Ta'ala. Then, if you work for 11 hours or 10 hours, even then it will be equivalent to the, the work or study done by a non-believer for 14 hours. So you will save three hours here. 
right? So 9 hours plus 10 hours, 19 hours, eh? plus 1 and a half hour for your eating and doing this and that thing. 20 hours, 30 minutes, then 1 hour outside games and play or any recreation. 21 hours, 30 minutes, right? And then give some time to your family, have a good chat with them, discussion and this and that thing, one hour, that is enough. 22 hours, 30 minutes. Hmm? Then for studying, general, increasing your knowledge, general knowledge, one hour, 30 minutes to one hour. So in this, you have to do some time management. So if you manage your time in this way, that you will excel in your study, you will be discharging your duty towards Allah Ta'ala, and as a result, towards Khilafat, and to your religion, to your Jumaat. And on the weekends, you give some time to your Jumaat, Udamal Amdiya work. And then at the same time, spend weekend on uh, with with your family members as well. Huh? So you make a plan for five working days and two weekends days. So this is how you can manage and do justice, right? right? You will have to find out the ways on your own, right? Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Okay, Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa My question is, um, some of us khuddam feel at times that we are ready for marriage. However, when we discuss this with our parents... How old are you? How old are you? You look quite young. You look quite I'm young. 18 years old. Huh? How much? 18 years Haman? old. 18 years. So, 18. you shouldn't worry at this age. Achha, achha. Then, okay. Anyway, if you get married, no problem. I don't have any objection. Even I, I would like if you get married. Achha. Achha, then, however, when we discuss this with our parents, then again, we are often discouraged or told that we are not, we are not ready to carry this big responsibility. What is beloved Huzur's advice on discussing this topic with parents? I have already said, if you get married at this age, I will be happy. <laughs> so, you see, if, you're, if you are irresponsible boy, and your behavior is just irresponsible, which your parents can observe in you, then obviously they will say you are not um, uh, and, uh, ready to carry the big responsibility. But if you show responsible behavior, then they will not say this thing, right? The thing is that who will give you, who will be ready to marry you? Obviously, the girl would like that the husband should be working somewhere, getting some money, so that he can meet the expenses and can run household affairs, all these things, right? If you are ready that you can do it without depending on your parents, then you should get married, right? In the olden days, when boys used to get married at early age, they were not relying on their parents. They would earn their own money and they will run their family affairs on their own, right? If you are ready to do that, now my advice is that you should get married now and today and even after immediately after this meeting. Huh? I, I don't have any objection, right? So, but if you don't have that, you see, your resources are limited and uh, you are still studying and you are relying on your parents, even on your studies. You take pocket money from from your parents, 
and when you get married, then your wife will also demand some for pocket money. You will ask again your father, oh, give me some more money so that I can give to my wife. No, then why? How can you get married? See? But if you are doing some job, yes, so you should get married, marry as, as early as possible. Right? Immediately you complete your studies and you find some job then you should get married. Okay? Then you can ask your you can ask your parents that or if there is any special case, then your parents should know that this is a special case. And you if you need my recommendation in that particular case for yourself or your for your friend, then write to me then I will I, I will personally uh, approach your parents to, to help you. Okay? Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Zuhu, my question is, the promised Messiah stated that a human cannot save himself from sins or protect himself from shaitan on his own. What activities can we do to get Allah's help to stay protected from shaitan? You see, Allah Ta'ala has asked us to pray to Allah Ta'ala. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. This is the prayer given to us by Allah Ta'ala Himself. So if you, if any, any time you think then Satan is trying to overcome you. Then say Auzu Billah min Shaitan Rajim. Say Istighfar. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa tuba ilay. There are so many other prayers. Rabbana zalamna anfusana illam taqfir lana tarhamna lana gunana min al khasirin. When Satan attacked the Adam al Islam, then he prayed this thing. Rabbi ni zalamtu nafsi wa taraftu bi zambi. So there are so many prayers. So you should seek Allah's help. And if you are fervently praying in your five daily prayers and seeking Allah's help and asking him to protect you from the, the attacks of this shaitan, then Allah Ta'ala will save you, inshallah Ta'ala. Right? And at the same time, you should loathe and hate the things which are taking you towards shaitan. In present day world, you, if you are seeing some bad programs on television after 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock, right? Which are for, said to be or for, for mature and elder old people, not for children. Or you are seeing some program on the internet or some other nonsense seeing you know, your chats on Instagram or Facebook or all these things, they are all taking you towards satanic things. Right? So just avoid those things. And whenever any yeah, sometime if the thought come into your mind, then Whenever you think about it, anything comes across in your mind about uh, the bad things, then immediately say, Auzu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajeem, say Istighfar. And or say, in your, be, you have to be determined and firm if you want to avoid the satanic attacks. You have to fight for that. With, with, with the, with the, fight with the the shaitan. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, right. Allah, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. My question is how can students who get anxious in front of a crowd be able to improve their public speaking skills? You don't seem to be the, such person, are you? 
Theodore, sometimes I do get anxious. Acha, <laughs> then, uh, to, uh, what, why, why you have to appear before the public for speaking? Are you doing some Khudam Alamdiya job which is related to this field? I uh, know there were sometimes like presentations, group presentations. Presentation in, in, in the university. The sem seminars, seminars and group presentation. presentation. Eh? Yeah. Or research papers. Right? So before going to, the, to this, uh, in, in this uh, type of function, you should stand before the mirror and repeat your speech and address three, four times loudly. Huh? Then it will give you some confidence. Secondly, you must think that all those sitting before you, in front of you, are just ignorant people. And you are the only knowledgeable person. Right? Then it will also develop some confidence in you. Create some confidence in you. Right? Yes. Okay. That is the only thing. And also, see, seek Allah's help. I'll, you pray to Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala help you. Say, Iddina Sirat al eh? And Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman rahim Right? So, in this way, you'll also get some strength. Okay? Jadakallah. Assalamu alaikum, Charlie Hazur. Wa alaikum assalam. Is the money we send to friends and relatives considered sadqa? If your intention is that uh, this money we are sending is a sadqa, then it is a sadqa. If your intention is that uh, this money you are sending to your friends and relatives is not sadqa but a gift for them, inna mala malu biniyat. Your deeds depend on your intentions. So, it all depends. Right? So, once uh, a person brought some uh, uh, goat meat for the Holy Prophet and Holy uh, Prophet asked that uh, where did you get it from? He said somebody sent this thing as sadhka to me. And sadhka is prohibited and not permissible for the prophets and even for the family of the prophets. Right? Holy Prophet said that it was it is a sadhka for you. But since you have brought it for me, you are not giving me sadhka, you have brought uh, here for me to eat as a gift. So it is a gift for me, so I can eat it. So it all depends on the intention. Okay? So if you should not, you should, you should be somehow generous. Why should you give sadhka to your relatives and friends? Eh? You give them gift if you want to help them. Right? Okay, yes. uh, uh, you speak Urdu in a French accent. You also speak yes, Urdu, you also speak Urdu in a French accent, not only English. <laughs> okay. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> My name is Fazan Ahmed Qureshi. I'm a second year perceptual neuroscience student. With the situation of the uh, pandemic, we have seen the rise of technology greatly influence our lives. What is Hazur's guidance regarding the study of technological advances and how it can help the Jamaat and serve humanity? You see, who has given you the wisdom and brain to a human being? Allah. Allah Ta'ala. So it, it means it is Allah's work. Allah Ta'ala has asked you that you can do research and excel in it. Right? And Allah Ta'ala will help you. 
He will reward you for your research. And if you are praying to Allah Ta'ala, then it will help you at the same time as our research already said. And these technological advancement is for the benefit of human being. As long as it is beneficial for a human being, you should get benefit out of it. But where it is being used to destroy the humanity and polluting the minds of the people, as in internet and Facebook and Instagram and so many things, then a true believer, a moment, an Ahmadi Muslim should avoid these things, right? So as long as this technological advancement is beneficial for human being, we must use it. We have to use it. This is for our benefit and it is Allah's help to us and it is, it is you see, we, we have to be, uh, we show gratitude to Allah Ta'ala that He has given us such an advancement. But when they are being used for polluting our minds, then we should avoid them and say astaghfar. Avoid them. Okay? Jesus. Okay, Zakallah. Assalamu alaikum, Peri, sir. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, my question to you is, we as Qadam take a pledge in which we say deen over dunya. When we are doing jamaat work, there comes a point when it's hard to balance school and jamaat work. Which one should we prioritize at that point, jamaat or school work? You see, as long as you are a student, you should give more time to your studies and give your weekends to the jamaat. Right? Because after completing your education, you are going to be more beneficial for the Jamaat, more, more productive for the Jamaat than now, right? So increase your knowledge, excel in your studies, complete your education, and after completing your education, then you can give more work to the Jamaat. But at present, you should do justice with your studies first, and then if you have spare time during the normal weekdays, you can give time to the Jamaat. Otherwise, you can give time at the weekends. Okay? But, but it does not mean that in the name of getting education, you just waste your time here and there, gossiping and seeing nonsense and the internet and some pornographies and this and that and say, I'm very busy in doing my job. Eh? You are not busy in that sense. Eh? So you have to see to it that whatever, honestly, what you are doing is for the sake of your studies, then well and good, do it first. And then second preference should be the Jamaat. But at the same time, I will give precedence my deen over dunya also means that wherever it comes that uh, somebody asks you that you should not pray five daily prayers then you should know I cannot do this thing I cannot stop praying and at the same time while studying in the university you should also give Preference to your deen on dunya is that that whenever prayer time comes, whether it is zor or asr time, then you offer your five daily prayers, and now your, your zor prayer and asr prayer, right? And then after that, start your studies again. So this is this is the meaning at present. That what are the obligations on you by Allah Taala of His haq, of His rights? then you have to discharge your rights towards Allah Ta'ala. And Allah Ta'ala says that you offer five daily prayers on time and if possible on, in congregation. But here in the university, you cannot offer your prayer in congregation. Only if there are four or five MG students, you can join together and offer your prayer in congregation. Otherwise, 
whenever prayer time comes, first ask your professor and teacher that this is my prayer time. Give me some time, 10 minutes so that I can offer my prayer and then offer your Zohar and other prayer and then come back and start your studies again. This is the meaning at present. It does not mean that you should, for this, at the cost of your in the prayers, um, you just, uh, at the cost of your studies, you just leave your prayers. No. You have to do justice. You pray whenever there is prayer time and continue your studies after that. But as far as the Jamaat's work, other Jamaat's work is concerned, then you should give your weekends to the Jamaat work and give more emphasis on your studies. Right? Yes. But where there are Allah's rights, then there should not be any compromise. Yes. Okay? Understand? Yes. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Pierre Azur. Azur, my question no, no. is uh, How can an MD Muslim in the field of law assist Jamaat, and which area of law does Azur recommend? Are you studying law? Yeah. What is your personal interest? Uh, actually, my personal interest. Do you want to specialize in some particular field, or you are just doing general law? Yeah, I am doing, doing uh, general law. Actually, I came from, pa from Pakistan in 2019. And uh, yeah, I did my LLB from University of the Punjab, Lahore. And uh, in Canada, I am an uh, internationally trained lawyer. And I am a law student. I did my so, LLB from now, uh, yes, so Canada. Now you have got admission in the university and studying law. Okay. Then uh, I think you should, if, if there is any chance, of uh, getting specialization in any of the field in law, then you should do uh, human rights law. Yes. Right? But don't in yes. or go into criminal law. Yes. That, that is not, although Pakistani like criminal law, but you should not go into that field. Yes. Right? Azur, yes. 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 what about the uh, international humanitarian laws? As I have said, human yes. rights law, human rights, it will cover everything. Yes. You can further specialize when you study this law. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, My name is Dr. My name is Dr. Zubair Ahmed Chatha and my question is... Dr. Zubair Ahmed Chatha? Are you Chatha? Who's your father? Sayyid Ahmed Chatha, sir. Sayyid Ahmed Chatha? So you look like of his age. Achya? So he's... He must be very old now, huh? If... If... If, if your appearance is like this. <laughs> Achha. Huh. Huh. I'm still very young. <laughs> Achha. You are quite young? <laughs> still khadam. Yeah. You think, yes. <laughs> okay, what is your question? Azur, my question is, um, how can we convince our younger Fadam brothers to pursue post-secondary education? instead of entering the workforce uh, after high school? The, this is what I have been telling and even my previous Khulafas have also been, been telling the people, our students, that they should continue their studies, they complete their, they should not stop their education at, after secondary school. They should at least be graduate and Further their studies, even if it is, this is why the Khalifatul Masih Salas started the program of giving gold medals 
and he, it was his wish that uh, we should have at least 100 Nobel laureates in the community, Nobel Prize winners, and we should, be, should have at least 1,000 top scientists in our community, which we are not having at present, right? So, we have to encourage, this is why Amure Talaba department has been formed here in the Khudamul Amdiya and, and Sekhti Talim in the Jamaat system to encourage the students that uh, they should, instead of stop, stopping their education after secondary education, they should continue going to universities and further their studies. And uh, even if they think they cannot go into research or some other uh, um, science subjects or professional uh, fields like engineering and medicine, then at least they should sit in the competition examination and go into the civil service. So at least we should have good number of civil servants in the governments. And uh, you see, and if we are, all, we are having only a secondary education, we cannot achieve this target. So in each and every field, an Ahmadi should be present. And for that, you have to encourage them. And this is why the department of Amure Toluba was formed, that they should encourage the students. The, even this is the job of the parents as well. If the parents are educated, they will ask their children to further their studies after completing their secondary school. And if parents are illiterate or not very well educated, they see they will say, "Okay, putar hum do kam kar le." So, ye to is not the right thing. Yeah. So, the love of putar is not that. You know what is putar? You know what is putar? Beta. 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 Putar Punjabi mein kehte hain putar bete ko. So, beta kaam kar lo. Beta wo kaam kar lo kuch nahi hota. No, it's, it's not the the love which a, which parents show towards their children. Yeah. They should ask them to study, further their studies and, at, uh, and in the minimum education of an Ahmadi student should be graduation, right? And after that he can choose different fields, right? So this is your duty. You are a young boy, you can encourage them. Inshallah, sir. Inshallah. Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, Islam I said extend my Islam to your father. Jesus, inshallah, Zuru. Uh, ask, ask him that he should also write letters sometime. Jesus, inshallah. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. Okay, now you have come, so it is the last question. And uh, after that, Sadasa, one hour is complete. Huh? Yes, what's the question? Uh, Zuru. In the Western world, it is considered unusual to get married inside the family to a cousin. This generation is beginning to adopt Christian ways of getting married. As a Muslim, is it encouraged to get married to your cousins, or does Islam give you the right to get married into another family within the Jamaat? You see, the thing is that if they are considering that uh, to get married with the cousins, is uh, not uh, right, they are wrong. As long, because Allah Ta'ala says that you can get married with your cousins. So, we cannot say Allah Ta'ala has given us any commandment which is wrong. The people are wrong, but not Allah Ta'ala. And secondly, this is not the Christian way. This is the present day world way. Christians even used to get married with cousins, right? I don't think there's any 
prohibition in Christianity to get married. Secondly, the third thing is that a Muslim is encouraged to get married to your cousins or does this. You see, we should say that it is not wrong, as I have already said, to get married to your cousin. But if you think that you should not, or you think that uh, the, 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 the children, your offspring you will have, they can suffer from different diseases because of the intermarriages in the family, within the family, then that is a different thing. But that is not true. Because those intermarriages are, if they are being done continuously for generations, then it can happen. In the, here in this world, present day world, in this Western world, don't they have the same problems with their children? Um, uh, we are born defective. There are. So they are not, they are not, in, they, that is not the result of intermarriage, family marriage. So we should ask them that Islam permits that you should get married with your cousins as long as the, the, the commandment of Islam is concerned or the ethics is concerned or the science is concerned, there is no harm in getting married with the, children, the cousins. But if they like to get married outside the family, yes, they can marry because uh, it is not all, you see, if you should get married outside the family, but with the condition that the person should be an Ahmadi, Muslim, right? So that your generation does not deviate from the true teachings of Islam or the teachings of Ramadiyya, you know, right? So this is why we always emphasize that uh, boy and girl should get married with an Ahmadi boy and girl. This is the only thing. Otherwise, there is no harm in marrying outside the family. Do you want to marry outside the family or not? No, it's just a general not. question. <laughs> okay. Okay. If, if you if you find a good match in your family, then don't refuse it. If, yes, you, if your parents suggest that you have a good match for for you in, the, in the, within the family, then prefer it first. And if after that, if you have some other concerns, then you can go outside, outside the family, but within jamaat. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. Allah Hafiz. Yes, Allah, 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 Allah,